Hey, this is Tim from the Marching Roundtable. Thank you for watching this excerpt of my conversation with some members of the Blue Coats design team. I got to talk with Doug Thrower, Tom Rarick, and Vince Oliver. And you'll notice, even on this excerpt, that Vince isn't there in video. He was with the core. What often happens with the core staff when they're off in the summer at these different schools is they have a really hard time getting a good internet connection. So he's here by voice only. And the other two, you'll see the video of. But you'll want to watch the entire 50-minute conversation. You can watch that at marchingartseducation.com. There's no charge to access the video there. You're going to want to watch the whole thing because it's really interesting how they talk about how they got connected with the music of Thank You Scientist and then how they started working with it, how they interpreted it for drum corps, and then how they got connected with the members of the band. They shared the, the uh, finale files, they got information, sort of collaborated with the band on it in a lot of inter very interesting ways. And then, of course, they've had interactions with the band members who have come to see the core perform. It's been a fantastic interaction, and you're going to love hearing about how they designed the show, how they made choices of how to sort of re-orchestrate um, for the drum corps idiom, and, of course, other I items about the show and how they work together. We talk about amplification, all kinds of really interesting current topics, and, of course, what they're wearing. So don't miss the entire video at marchingartseducation.com and enjoy this excerpt. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of discussion about um, amplification, um, use of speakers and everything. You guys are sort of like the pioneers in that and have done it really well. And I think that what's going on right now is that there's people are trying to catch up and try to play this game and there's a learning curve going on so that not everybody is necessarily being super successful trying to do it. But um, you guys are doing something very unusual in your ballad with the miking amplification, right? So I wonder if you guys want to speak to that and why you made that choice. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, we, don't, we don't have to talk about it. Yeah, no, no, we can. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember where it started, but I, I think John was always fascinated by the idea of taking the chord into the back corner, but having the sound come from somewhere else. So the idea being uh, that it would crescendo, 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 and then we would turn the core away, but it would still get bigger. And I think part of the original idea was that we would move the sound to different parts of the field, which we're doing. Um, and he would, well, we were all really fascinated by that idea. And in fact, we went through, just like last year, we went through a number of possible ballads um, uh, until we found the one that actually fit the event. So the event became before the music was chosen kind of thing. And... Uh, uh, it's, uh, so the idea with the amplification, and this is important to us, it, it wasn't just about let's let's be louder than everybody. You know, it was about more about where we could place the sound because that, that's why we have speakers in different parts of the field. It wasn't about let's be as loud as we can be and we'll show them. And it was more about uh, where can we send the sound and where can we create events, you know, on the field. So. And, and and I I was really drawn to the idea. I still think it's a cool idea. Um, yeah, it's just the, the overall perception of the core progressively gets further away and they get louder. And by the end, it's the the field is filled with sound, but they've actually gotten as far away from you as they can. So that was kind of a guiding principle of the whole thing. Yeah. So, yeah. It's the, the production it's the production is called Growth So Tall, um, and choreographically, I think that's pretty. Pretty clearly presented um, in the beginning of it, and then, um, you know, musically, we're essentially doing the same thing via the microphones and the amplification towards the end, in sort of an unexpected way, which I think also kind of speaks to the the concept of jagged line, where you know, it's just there's there's quirkiness to it, there's like an unexpectedness to it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, yeah, we find it interesting. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, if if anything's cookie cutter in the activity, it's ballads, you know. And first of all, we went into this year going, we can't do great gig again, you know. That's we can't we can't do that. Like we just did it, and now it's time to try something different, you know, a different kind of sound. And uh, and this was just a really interesting way to present, you know, that music. So. Um, it's always tough, you know. We've even had years where we've gone like, do we have to do a ballad? Like, <laughs> because they, they can come off very, very formulaic, you know. And I, I say what you want about ours, it's not that. 
So I'm, I'm proud of it. But percussively speaking, too, there's one interesting element to the, well, one of the interesting elements to, to the end of it is the um, underneath the stage, the, the whole battery is underneath the stage for the, for the bulk of the ballad. But in the original, there's this very, like, there's this rising kind of, like, noisy, electronic, kind of almost, like, sounds like processed snare drum, kind of just this tension that kind of rises. And we try to kind of capture that idea and then also create another unexpected kind of, you know, sonority with the battery, un like, kind of muffled, and well, muffled and underneath the, uh, the stage. So... We've gotten a lot of comments like like they hear it. They I think some people assume it's maybe like electronic or kind of you know kind of thing because it, it's very atmospheric because it doesn't have the direction, doesn't have the sight that you of seeing them play it. But um, yeah, they're actually we're building that sound and kind of creating you know that, that churn and energy um, with the battery underneath the prop. And again, another one of those little kind of just a twist. You know, as you sort of throw the sound around the field, another support there from the from the battery got to the prop. What's really interesting about what you guys just said is that one of the complaints that we keep hearing from people with amplification going on is um, the trumpets are over here, but they're miking it and it sounds coming from over here. And that's like really bugging people to death. You know, like like the yeah. sound isn't coming. And I feel like you guys have figured this part out, but a lot of people aren't figuring it out yet. So I think what's interesting is that you just sort of said we intentionally wanted to play with that on purpose, and I think it's very cool the effect it creates. I guess one of my concerns is I want this learning curve to fix because I think it is frustrating to people that things are being amplified in ways that don't make sense to us as we're sitting there. You know, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. If it, you lose your believability, I think. If uh, like yeah. there has to be a reason to move the sound over there, some kind of visual reason, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I just think well, even even you know the whole 5.1 experiment kind of failed because people didn't manipulate it right. Like in a movie, you would see somebody sneaking up behind somebody, but the sound would be coming be from behind the viewer. So right. it's actually backwards of what it's supposed to be, right? So uh, yeah, I mean, I but we went like we're we're part of this learning curve too because we stand up there and go. Well, that's weird. It's coming. You know? <laughs> so we like we eventually do our best to fix all that, you know, and make it believable and sincere. You know, it's not it's it's not just about being louder for us. You know, it's mm -hmm. we've kind of there's two anal. I feel like there's two analogies. First, a, a bit of the Frankenstein, you know, uh, metaphor. You know, we've created a monster here. You know, and uh, the the other one is we're we're definitely in an arms race. You know, when it comes to the use of electronics and well, not electronics, amplification. You know, and uh, but it's no different than any other instrument that's been introduced. You know, to the drum corps. You know, uh, the timpanis. Hey, we can use timpanis now. Great, we're doing a Count Basie show, but we can. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and you know, anyone that bitches about, you know these experiments and the, and the progress just close your eyes and listen to most telephone sections and you'll understand that we're still figuring that out too 